morning. What's up, everybody? How are y'all doing? It is another day in 2021. The sun is saying hello and goodbye today. It's kind of a dreary day out, very windy, um, quite cloudy. The clouds are really beautiful, actually, but I feel like they're about to get very gray today. What I have planned for the day is, you know, good start. It's not the prettiest thing, but I'm getting some veggies in, which is something that I have been uh, trying to be better about. I've been eating just so much pizza and stuff lately. Feeling sluggish and just like, I feel like my skin smells like pizza. <laughs> Today, I am going to be doing a few DIY projects that I have been wanting to tackle. I'm gonna be making some more of my macrame little coasters and I feel like it's such a great intro to macrame. It is so easy once you start doing it. I wanna show you some of the cross stitch projects I have going and also hopefully I'm trying to learn how to do those little daisy beads, you know, how you can bead. I, I know I've done it in the past when I was younger, but my sister really wanted a daisy bead necklace. Oh my gosh, is it raining right now? Do you guys see that? It is so sunny and it is raining. Oh no, it stopped, it was just for a minute. But can you see the the deck has raindrops? Gosh, the light is just going like a little crazy today. Um, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of makeup to feel cute. <laughs> um, and then actually before we get into the DIYs, I do have a sponsor for today's video, which they're really cool. It's uh, UTI products. I feel like a lot of y'all would find these items very useful. So I am going to throw on some makeup and tell you all about it. It's like the strangest weather ever. Makeup on, hair slicked back. I've been really liking this like slick back bun vibe with the sweatsuit. Um, okay, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be talking about a UTI product brand. This video is in partnership with Eucora, and I have been testing out some of these products now since November. I'm sure I do not need to explain to a lot of you what urinary tract infections feel like and how debilitating they are. UTIs are the second most common infection in the US behind the common cold, and more than half of all women will experience a UTI in their lifetime. I feel like since the time that I got my first UTI until now, technology and everything has changed so rapidly. The conversations about UTIs and sexual health, like, I mean, we're, we're destigmatizing left and right. I wish I had these products back then though, because it just would have been, it, it just would have, made things so much easier and, and less uncomfortable for myself. So I have one of their kits here. I would say this one is more of like a preemptive or just like a regulatory kind of system here. They also have a uh, emergency kit. In the emergency kit, they have like a test strip. They have a couple products that will like relieve the symptoms of a UTI until you can see a medical professional. This one is like upkeep. You know, so here, this is the complete system. We have target, control, and promote. Uh, promote is a probiotic. It is a specialized vaginal probiotic that maintains good bacteria, keeping the vaginal microbiome balanced, and vaginal health is critical to urinary tract health. Control cleanses the biofilm, and biofilm can build up in the urinary tract Target's ingredients work upon urination and it flushes out the urinary tract. So they say actually to drink Target after sex and anytime you feel like you need extra support. I know a lot of people that even if they urinate after having sex, they get UTIs. That has definitely happened to me before. I've had five UTIs at least in my life, at least five. One of them so bad that like my kidney started, it was bad. Anyways, I will do anything to prevent a UTI from happening. I'm so, so careful 
about urinating after having sex, but for some people that still doesn't work. So something like this could really help you out by fleshing out the urinary tract. As I was finishing my glass, I realized like, I don't even think I mentioned this when I was talking earlier, that they are these little packets that taste like pink lemonade and they're pretty good. And good for your body. <laughs> I'll have a link for all these products down below. Like I said, the emergency kit is for in the moment when you need like relief now. And this is upkeep, which I think is even more important. Like when I don't take uh, probiotics, I can definitely feel difference in my body, like in terms of like discharge. And you know when you have that like, that feeling, you're like, something's going on. Um, I did actually have that feeling recently, and I was like, oh crap, I need to take my probiotic. I took it, and then the next day, like, everything seemed back to normal. So, obviously, that's a good sign. I'm not saying that if you have chronic UTIs, like, this is your end all solution, but this could potentially be something that could help you. So, I don't wanna mislead you here, uh, and Eucora doesn't want to either. But if this is something that you want to try out, I think you should just go for it. Let's get into some macrame. Josie only growls at the mailman. Like, what a dog, right? Such a dog. He's like, such a nice guy too, I feel so bad. There's so many crazy dogs in my neighborhood and I was like, Joel, <laughs> don't, don't feed the stereotype because like everyone else, she's just perfectly fine. And then the mailman, she's like, <laughs> like I've never heard her bark or growl at anyone uh, crazier. Maybe it's the hat. And also he wears a full like, you know, filtered, uh, what is it called? The, the really intense masks, which makes a lot of sense. So that could be scary to her. Um, but yeah, okay, what was I just saying before Josie got all crazy? I'm gonna set up, ooh, actually, that area looks so messy right now. But, okay, whatever. This is a cross stitch that I was working on over Christmas? Even way, way before Christmas, but it's, Done! My little kitchen cross stitch. The lines come off with heat, so I just need to iron this out, but I think this turned out so nice. And I changed up a bunch of the colors. The only thing is, I wish now, like, that I had, okay, I'm gonna show you the one that I've currently been working on for a while. I wish that I had, that fabric at the time because I just am not super into the stark white and you know I had this crazy thought I was like what if I cross stitch <laughs> all the spaces with a color and I was like dude I cannot do that because you know how long it took like you know how long it takes just to do that like the light th think of like this this purple here is an entire night like just this zone or like the fridge took me multiple days to do the fridge. It is like so time intensive to cross stitch. Um, so I was like, I cannot, I don't know, maybe. I think about it. Maybe because I'm now taking a break from it. I'm like, I could do that. No, that's so, oh my God, all that, all the white. I'm also trying to figure out, um, I cross stitched it on my plastic a hoop, which I do prefer to cross stitch on because it really does make the fabric really taut. Whereas when you have it on a, a wooden one, it gets loose really fast and really easily. Um, so I need to get a hoop to put this on and then I can finish it off and then I'm gonna hang it, I think like next to my window. Do you see that? Like, but it's lower. Like there's a little zone over here that I might hang it in. This is my bathroom one that I'm working on. Oh my God, I'm so lame. Um, this is the bathroom one that I've been working on and I wish I had this fabric for that one. Ugh, how cute would that have been? 
this kind of like natural kind of look on here. So I've finished all the white parts and I have to fill out, oh my goodness, here's my pattern, which is better for you to see. No, wait, here's, here's a printout, oh my gosh, of what it looks like online. But I change, I'm changing up a ton. It's gonna cross out a bunch of stuff. Those are all the colors. I changed out a ton of the colors. I'm making it so all the bottles that are gonna be sitting on here are actual products that I like. Um, okay, wait, <laughs> there's so much to show you. <laughs> this is why I have this over here. These are all the products that uh, I, I'm trying to include in the pattern. I wrote it out here. Here we go. So I kind of like obviously measured out exactly the space that I have in the little shelf. And then I made three shelves. Um, so we have like a Summer Fridays, Suwasu, Eve Lom, Augustinus Bader, Super Goop, Primera. Tata Harper, Murad, Augustinus Potter, Lancome. <laughs> These are like all the products I'm actually currently using, which are all, yeah, right here. So I figured out the spacing. Oh yeah, and in the shower shelf, I am putting my Function of Beauty ones. Like this is kind of like a copy of a similar shape that they already have. So I'm gonna, I just need to figure out all the colors and stuff. I'm gonna do the hand towels, my brain dead ones. I have these green, I'll just show you. <laughs> Am I so crazy? I have like too much. I think I have too much alone time right now, like for real, but okay. So the hand towels, I'm gonna try and make it look like my brain dead hand towels. They also have full towels. So I might like try and copy one of their full towels, but it pretty much just has this like little I, I can't fit this on, a, it's like the tiniest little space. So maybe I'll just gonna try and make it green. And then the bath mat is on the pattern, it's just like pink, but I'm gonna make it my, I think, cold picnic, little uh, bath mat. And then the towels, I'm gonna model them after my onsen towels. Wow, I have like a lot of really custom towels. I didn't even think about that. I really do. I am gonna set up right here the macrame coasters. So, oh, let me just show you a little finished product. Okay, this is what I'm going to be making more of today. So, so easy. And I mean, just fun. You could do it anytime. So I'm just gonna set it up right now. One sec. Next day, Stephanie here. Yes, I'm in the same sweatshirt. Shh. So yesterday I filmed the macrame coasters. I just really don't like, or I didn't like how the angle was and the lighting and everything just wasn't, it just wasn't up to my standards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and redo it today. Okay, I figured it out. Um, <laughs> this is what this whole situation looks like right now. Hello. Look at my tripod, it's all crooked looking, all crazy. So, all you need for this project, these coasters right here, uh, is macrame. I'll link, this, this one's just from Amazon, to be honest, and I'll link it down below. You're going to need a nice pair of scissors and something to measure with. I just have this ruler right here. I do wanna note beforehand, and just keep this in mind, that the amount that you pull on the string, um, how taut you make it, and how like uniform you are within each knot really makes a difference, obviously, in your <laughs> macrame in general. So like this is one that turned out really nice. Sorry, it's kinda got all smushed up right here. Um, and you can kind of decide in terms of the fringe how long you want it on the end. Here's like my short guy, medium, and then really long. This is my very first one where I just kind of like, was like, I'm gonna try it. I don't, I'm not really gonna listen to any directions really. I watched one video on it and then this is what happened. 
It's like uh, you versus the guy she says not to worry about kind of situation. So just letting you know, like this was my very first one and then like pretty much one just like this was the next one. So don't give up if you are just starting off. In terms of the macrame, so we're gonna have one long strand of 60 inches and then five more to start off of, I wanna say around 35, 36 inches. I've seen other ones where they do it shorter and I just don't get the size of coaster that I want, but I do, you know, mine are a little bit larger I think than other people's. So let's do that. One of 60 inches and then five around 36. All right, so here we have our five shorter ones and then here is our longer one. With the longer one, what you initially wanna do is make a loop. And I'm gonna show you, this is how the loop is gonna look like this. I kind of want both ends to be ending up on the left side and we're gonna be working on the part that crosses over here on top of itself. We're gonna grab one of the shorter strands and we're gonna do something called a cow hitch knot. And what that is is that you are going to fold the strand in half and you are going to pull it underneath this loop, so both strings, and you are going to pull it through itself and then tighten. I like to work uh, on a surface like this, or if you have like, a, I don't know, a wood, wood table, but the marble is just like really slippery and it kind of makes it hard to grip sometimes. And we're gonna continue on with all five. So underneath and then bring the two strands through. I don't want these to be like crazy tight, but also not just like loosey goosey, you know? Because what we're gonna do now is we are going to pull this string so it's going to all go underneath itself. You can do it this side too. And then you can kind of adjust it. So now what we have here, it's kind of like a little starfish guy. This is now kind of like a, a string that you're never gonna mess with again. Um, so I actually generally try and make this string a little bit shorter so I'm not wasting uh, any of the macrame. We're gonna pull that under and like I said, your long uh, macrame cord is your lead co cord. Everything is gonna pretty much wrap around this. So it's always gonna be on top, uh, initially on all of the other cord. And we're gonna do something called a double half hitch knot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one on top and separate this a little bit more so you can see better. We're gonna grab this first one. The lead is on top. This is on the bottom now, underneath. Then we're gonna pull it over to make a four and we're gonna loop it underneath into the hole of the four and we're gonna pull. And it's called a double half hitch because we're gonna do that again. So here's a short string, four, pull it into the hole and then tighten. We're gonna do it one more time. So now what I do is I just kind of like bring the next one down. Our lead is on top. We're gonna make a four. We're gonna pull it through this loop, pull it tight. Four, pull it through the loop, and then pull it tight. Another thing I wanna mention uh, as we're going along, if this is your first time ever doing this knot, is the short string is doing all the work. So you're pretty much wrapping the short string around the long string. So here we go. Short string, here's the long one. We're gonna make a four, pull it through the loop, and then pull it tight. I put my thumb there 
so it guides the short string to wrap around the loop. As you can see, it's kind of making these nice round little loops here. We're gonna do it again. Four, under, pull it tight. If you try and make this, here, let me try and do this. I know this is a third one, but if you do this, like you're pulling the long string as well, what can happen is that the knot gets kind of messed up looking. It kind of makes it more of like a pretzel knot. The short string is the one who is knotting around the, the long string. Long string is like literally not doing anything at all. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around till we reach the shortest little guy, which yeah, it's a good it's a good marker, you know, for the end of your course here. As you can see, there is a bit of a gap in between the final chord and the first one. What we're gonna do now is fill that gap with macrame. And the way to figure out how long you want the chord to be, the way that I've figured it, is I just see how long the last chord was. And I double that and add a little bit more uh, for the loop. I kind of, you know, I'm, a, I'm pretty forgiving with this, but honestly, if you start doing a lot more macrame projects, the amount of cord that you kind of end up wasting is a bit of a shame. So I try and be a little bit more exact now, but when you're starting off, it's fine. Just like waste away. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is another cow hitch knot. This is the long cord. I have the one I'm adding on and I am pulling it through. Sometimes you need to add two in a section. Um, for this one, I feel like it's okay. Generally for me, the first, after the first loop, once you start adding, the second one, you're adding quite a bit. After adding uh, this extra cord here, you're just gonna move on and you're not gonna mess with it till you loop around again. So we're gonna just move forward and we're gonna do our double half hitch knot. There we go. Okay, again, we came across another one here. So, and then add double half hitch knot to the long string. So I'm gonna continue doing this now um, for a few spirals at this point. I think you guys are getting the idea. Hopefully I'm explaining this okay because this is my first time having to explain a macrame project. With my coasters, I reach around five or six, six a little bit too large, five rings. So if you look at this one, I go, here's the center obviously, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's kind of five on each side of this little slit right here, that's when I stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I have a couple of corrections at this point. I did say 36. You know what, no, this is correct because here's like my shortest guy and I know this one's probably from the original strings. What I would say in terms of measuring the additional strings, if you really wanna be uh, you know, prudent with your macrame cord is to see what the shortest string length is 
in the whole bunch and cut your additional strings to fit that. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, so at this point here, I pretty much stop right at the beginning. Here, here's like the very first loop over here. Uh, and now what do we do with this guy here? We're gonna flip it over and find a hole. You see there, like there's a hole right there. I'm just gonna stick the cord through. I don't know if this is what other people do, but I kind of, so here it is through one, and now I'm gonna stick it back over in another. Stick it back through again, and I'm just gonna do that one more time, like there, and then back, so that the end is now kind of weaved through the back side. I'm going to pull that taut and make a nice knot. And honestly, it's kind of gonna sit in there and it's not, it's just not gonna move since we haven't weaved through a few of them. I've been using my coasters and you know, haven't had any issues. So now we're just going to cut that like that and there you go, kind of disappears. This one, you don't even have to worry about knotting because it's, it's just, it's in there, okay? So it's, it's not moving uh, and you can just cut that. Now let's handle the fringe. So what I'm gonna base this off of is obviously here's my shortest guy right here. I am gonna cut around so that everything kind of matches this. It's all unraveled already, so it is a, a little bit longer. It's totally not even right now, but we're gonna be adjusting that more. So currently, what I'm gonna do is I, before brushing it out, I like to unwrap them a bit and I just kinda, this is what I do, twist it. Twist it, opposite. It doesn't have to all the way unravel, but it makes the brushing out process a whole lot easier. Now that we're all twisted out, we're gonna brush it out and the easiest thing to do this with is a dog brush or a pet brush. I like to bring it into the base and do a little wiggle and pull. Do a little wiggle, pull. Josie's actually watching me do this right now from the couch, I wish you could see. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> is that an animal? Again, I don't know if this is the best way to do this, um, but I have found that I like this, this method. This is now where we're gonna trim it from. I'm gonna trim off a lot, actually. Is that not the most satisfying sound ever? Also, very important to get yourself just a nice pair of scissors that are only for fabrics and these kind of projects. No paper. Okay, here we go right now. Honestly, I would prefer to do it a little bit shorter, but I am making these for my sister and I think this is kind of like the size-ish. Might, I might cut a little bit more on this side, but this is the around the size that I think I'm gonna make for her. Oh man, I could just keep going and going with this. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. What's up, y'all? I did it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a little bit of a challenge, but we got the video. To oh, Josie is now just pulling every single toy out of her basket. Okay. I'm gonna try and do this quietly so she doesn't see that I'm talking about her. Otherwise, she's gonna come over here. 
So there's her toy basket. That's her dog bed. And then I, I usually okay. stack my two poofs. I'm sitting on one right now. And I have the blankets on top of the poofs. Sitting on the, on the poof instead of her dog bed, knocked the blankets off, took all her toys out of the basket. Hi, everyone. Um, so just clean up a little bit right now. I have a bunch more to make, so I'm going to be doing that a little later. I really hope that was helpful. I feel like as I was explaining how to do it, even yesterday, oh, it was a lot worse. Um, but yeah, I hope I explained it okay so you get the gist of how to wrap the macrame and everything. But um, I was going to move forward and try and do the daisy chain right now and show y'all but it's actually okay out it's freaking cold actually um but it's gonna be raining the next few days i believe and josie we just really need to go to the park and let her get some of this energy out huh joe yeah so i'm gonna be taking you to the park with us you want to go to the park you want to go to the park joe you want to go play yeah <laughs> pretty much what i bring to the park is this bag right here we have her little chuck it we have her okay so her collar's in here i need to put her collar on last minute like the very last thing because she goes and she knows we're leaving her leash is in the car and i just had to grab her water so i fill up this entire thing. Oh, sorry, Joe. Oh, she's so excited. This bad boy right here. And then I fill one up for myself to drink in the car afterwards. Lots of prep here. What video did I talk about that? I take Joe to this like really big open field that pretty much a, a bunch of dog owners have just taken over. Um, and so I, there's no water dispenser for dogs there. So I just fill this big guy up and usually other dogs drink the water as well, but Josie drinks a lot of water when she's at the park. Ready for when we return? her and put her in between my legs like this so the collar doesn't pinch her. I'm gonna put it on. Oh no, it's upside down. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. ready it's so funny because sometimes Josie even like to get on the bed or the couch cannot like she can't even like pull her back legs out like grab her and bring her up but she can jump straight she can jump so high she's so funny okay are you ready to go to the park let me Josie come here oops Good girl. Good girl. She has a little seatbelt on.
<laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> that is, I did not do that sun placement on purpose at all. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah, girl. Okay, Josie knows what time it is. Come on, go on. Thank you. All the way in. Thank you. This angle is too much of my like Asian squat. I hope. <laughs> Let's do more of that. not the cutest little wet dog you've ever seen in your whole life oh that was in the mouth joe i feel so lucky that josie's so good at taking baths she's not fearful of them and i have my my like system down you know like my my method of bathing her so that she only shakes like right at the end and actually this time around I didn't have the towel ready. Usually I have it just on the ground right in front of the door and I realized it was like on the sink on the other side. So I usually don't even catch any of her shake. So I think I'm making an executive decision for this vlog. I know at the beginning I said I was going to do the daisy chain necklaces but with all the footage, this vlog would be like an hour long if I included that. Like edit it down. So I'm just gonna put that into the next one. I also, I had the footage from that one yesterday I because I didn't like how it really looked just like the macrame one. So I'm kind of happy to have the opportunity to film it in a way that just looks nicer anyways. So I apologize about that, but it'll be in the next vlog, which will be coming up really soon then. Um, I also was wondering, I know, Sometimes if you want to learn how to do something like making a macrame uh, coaster, you, you don't want all the fluff all around it and you just want the information. So I'm wondering like, do you enjoy these vlog style kind of videos with DIYs in it? Or do you just want a video of the DIYs, no vlogging? Um, I'm wondering which is more enjoyable to watch. I think what I'll do is I'll put like a timestamp of 
act the actual DIYs when I put them into future vlogs so you could just like jump to it. Thank you so much to Yukora for partnering with me in this video. I'm always really happy to have companies like Yukora contact me. Um, items that are like really useful in in life. Ugh, UTIs are just the absolute worst and prevention is definitely key, especially right now. It's just not the time to go to the, the hospital or an emergency room. Like I had to go to an emergency room one time from a UTI that just happened out of nowhere. So it's just not a good time. And so if you have these things on hand and you're preventing it from happening, then that's like one less thing, I guess, to really worry about. The link to the Eucora website, once again, is in the description box. Uh, check it out. I hope y'all are staying safe out there, that you're doing well emotionally, mentally, physically. I am here with you. So yeah, hope you're doing well and I will see you in the next video. Bye.